Alec. Um, I, yeah, that was, thanks for the intro. And just thank you for having me on this panel. I feel very blessed and humbled to be here. Um, and I think this panel is very aptly named, <laughs> especially considering just like what um, the education is all about. So I feel like a good place to start would probably be with the creation of the education and why, why it happened. Um, there's actually my co-founder, Ginsella, who's um, watching today. So she and I basically created it after I, I met her and, um, well, she really came up with it. It wasn't, it wasn't me. Um, <laughs> but we've been working on this together for the last like two years now. Um, and essentially she in her final year found out that, um, you know, there's the dicey arms fair that happens every two years in the uk in london and it prompted her to kind of look into university involvements in the arms trade and specifically the university of manchester where she and i both um attended so she actually created like a small cat society for uom um and with the help of bds with the help yeah alongside bds um there was a report that was written which exposed um, the impl implications that the University of Manchester has had when it comes to furthering Israeli apartheid. The report is called Entangled. Um, I hope it'll come up in the chat box soon or else I'll put it there later myself. But essentially, you know, I won't go into like massive detail for the sake of time, but um, one thing that they did show is that, you know, the involvements that the University of Manchester has with the company Caterpillar um, whether it's only a small part of their portfolio that they're investing in that has nothing to do with armament, ultimately Caterpillar manufactures bulldozers which can be armored and then in turn used on Palestinians and Palestinian land. So the question then comes up of like, why, why, how could this happen at a university, right? You think of universities and you think of them as institutions where, yes, research is a massive part of it but it's also a place of enlightenment. How can we be enlightened and yet continue to pour money in student labor into an industry that's crippling our own future, you know? So Gensella and I figured we needed education um, and more of it as a community in order to create a space for people who want to see change in our university systems, but may not be able to do so in a conventional way of organizing protests and going to them themselves, right? So we are working in a myriad of ways to uh, end the ties between the arms trade and universities in order to put forward more ethical and sustainable opportunities for students. Um, you know, for example, uh, arms companies will recruit future employees literally in classrooms and at career fairs. And I don't know about you, but I feel like every student that's basically got 30,000 pounds of debt will probably not turn down a really, really good job with an incredible paycheck as soon as they come out of, you know, university. So they know what they're, they know what they're doing <laughs> when they're doing this. And universities themselves have become their own microcosm. I hope that's the word, but their own microcosm of like a militarized society. So you know how there's lobbying that's involved with um, like defense policy from arms companies, right? I'm making it very, very simple, but it's kind of the same revolving door system at universities where most of the time research and development will be carried out by the Ministry of Defense for arms companies. But sometimes they also will dip into universities in order to get resources like student labor, young fresh minds that can think of, you know, really innovative stuff. So it seems like no matter what stage of society we're in, there's just a constant push for militarism and in my opinion, like a disregard for renewable energy and peaceful efforts, um, because it doesn't make anyone any money, you know? Um, I'll give you a really good example, basically, of, of that as well at the University of Manchester. BAE Systems, uh, you know, the wonderful BAE Systems company that we all know and love, they have a new drone uh, that's called the Magma Drone, M-A-G-M-A. -A -A. And when you look up the Magma drone on BAE's website, they basically say how like, oh my gosh, we have the researchers and the wonderful people at the University of Manchester to thank for the designing and everything of this drone. But if you in turn ask the University of Manchester, hey, hi, 
what is that thing that you worked on with the uh, BAE systems? They'll be like, I have no idea what you're talking about. We, we don't make arms. Like that is not something that we do. So there's a lack of accountability that exists there when in reality, like it's, it's very, again, the company itself are saying we've had help from this university in creating this drone, you know? So I think the worst part in all of this is and you know kind of what really set me and Gensella off was that um, universities, most of them, have a socially responsible investment policy, which will include points like we won't support modern day slavery or environmental degradation or the you know continuation of war and arming military regimes and all that stuff. But the University of Manchester, we know that through their direct um, sorry, through their public shareholdings list of 2020, they do have investments in companies that contradict their policy. And we had even spoken with the head of sustainability last year. And, um, you know, we raised these concerns to him, like, listen, if you guys are really trying to uh, align yourselves with the city of Manchester's um, zero carbon by 2038 idea and policy and stuff, you have to consider putting an end to the links that you have with the global arms trade. So he basically kind of told us that because of academic freedom, we can't really tell people what they can and can't study just because there's a small percentage that said research will then go towards the arms trade. Kind of as if it's like, it's a risk we're willing to take for the sake of giving our students academic freedom. <laughs> so, I mean, what do you say to that? Like, did you say that no, people shouldn't study these things or what? It, and it almost, you know, I, 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 the way I see the situation is that the university knows that this kind of relationship is not ideal, right? Or else they wouldn't write those socially responsible investment policies and they wouldn't put themselves in a light that is so, you know, we care about everyone and everything and yada, yada, yada. But it's a relationship that's needed because it's such a great way of getting funds, right? Like pretty massive access to funds. And especially now, you know, with after COVID and, and the effects that the pandemic has had on universities, I personally sometimes worry a bit that like the resistance that we face is just going to grow stronger because of the whole now's not the time for radical big change and think of all the people you're putting at risk when you take away this kind of research and what about the kids that want to study airplanes. I get it. I'm not saying that's not something that we can discuss, but if now is not the time for us to make these changes after we've seen the extent to it, like it is no secret that the arms trade is the biggest pollutant basically for this planet. If it's not now, then when are we going to make these changes? You know, I think that's the kind of big question that we need to ask ourselves. Um, and I'm going to leave it at that because I could go on for hours. <laughs> so I think um, that, yeah, yeah, thank you. <laughs>